just a master of practicing, and he would have caught it or he touched something. And, and uh, they were either from China or from uh, Okinawa or from uh, Northeast China, which you call the car area. So it was really just old time stuff. Between 1900 and 1950, approximately, we have the historic martial arts. And that's because in about that time, they started writing the history. And it was really, really difficult writing the history because there was, uh, there, you couldn't even understand the dialect of another part of China unless you were from there. They had to write little pictures to understand it. So a person living in one town uh, couldn't understand a person living 100 miles away. And the literacy wasn't really great, so they, they used simple things. They didn't use really complicated ways of, like I was listening today on the, uh, on the uh, public uh, channels, and they were talking about language. And they see some one age was over here, and he's having a big fight with his girlfriend. And whatever, and for some reason or other, they get mad and they split. And uh, this other ape over here, he has the capacity to know that they're angry, but he doesn't have the capacity to explain to another ape why these guys split up. His language won't accommodate him. He can't explain why these two, why they split up. He can say that they did it, but he can't. Even into a very, very short age. See, old people could then use their legs and use their arms and, and live uh, reasonably well. So this became a very, very important thing. Now all this time, there were a series of drills that people did. And the drills were designed to provide a certain kind of philosophy, a movement. It became functionality of, of the type of thing. They became a function, they were directed that way. And then they also became smoothness in nature, which means they became very, very healthy. So we've inherited the phrase of having functionality philosophically, which is the arrow that we're following, uh, the direction we're going to go. And then we have the uh, salubrious nature, the healthiness. So all these things together make a reasonable approach to things. Now, in none of these things have I even mentioned style. So, the, the name became confused because the Northeastern China era uh, was conquered by a great emperor, Lu Bei. And Lu Bei had this great general, the greatest general that they ever had in China, whose head is now even this uh, uh, Era was called the Ka era. So the techniques from there became those Ka Te, or To Te, or in Chinese, uh, I mean in the Korean, Tong Su. So, so these became, uh, the, the terminology, uh, Kata Te is To Te. It's just exactly the same word. And Tong Su is exactly the same word. It had no ray reflex to open hand. It wasn't until 1920 when this stuff came into J uh, Japan and they were just so upset <coughs> with the Chinese because they didn't feel that they needed any other country. <coughs> And they were in the process of trying to whack China anyway, so they needed all reference to China, used the same name, and called it the empty hand. It never was the empty hand. It was always the Chinese hand. Now, this Chinese martial art went to Okinawa, where it was further refined and came out as known as Thai, or Okinawa Pei. Then it went into China and Japan and became, about 1930, 1940, 1945, became the karate of Japan. The interesting thing was that this karate of Japan, it went to Japan the same time it came to the United States, and it went to Okinawa, it came to the United States actually before it went to Japan. But it, uh, Japan used this at the end of the Second World War as a method of training. So if they weren't allowed to train the Sanderais, and they weren't allowed to do all these military things, uh, MacArthur thought that since the Okinawan people had opposed the Japanese, that perhaps the Okinawan style of a martial art would be suitable for training children into group uh, characteristics. And they did it. And so the karate we have from Japan, a lot of it is kid stuff, designed to uh, train you in group characteristics. Now, let's go to some of those characteristics. There were people, for example, that went from uh, <coughs> 19, maybe 20, 1930, they went that group there. And who else knows this stuff? You guys need stabilized back here? And you know this too. Follow, okay? Go. One. Two. two. Now, one thing about these open hand drills is that I can look at you and I can see your mind struggling. And I can see how your mind is adapting to this stuff. Remember, the hands go flat like this. They go completely back and you go completely up. Turn your body out like this way. One, two. Now, it's not like this. It's not that way. It's like this, exactly. Okay, now these exercises were done at the time of Christ. These are really, really, really old exercises. And when I'm with my teacher, if I don't do these, why not? Because this is where you develop the 
that you really strengthen your calf, that strengthen your feet, and your body moves this way. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now we're going to wait a minute. Don't forget that. Look at your fingers. Go straight down. Get your neck back. Okay. Second side. Two. Two. Okay, wiggle your fingers and push straight up. Now this is not, you see, this is straight up. Okay. Three, two, three, <coughs> five, six, seven. Okay, wiggle the fingers and push straight up. Okay. Okay, wiggle the fingers again and push it down. Okay. 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 Wiggle the fingers and push straight up, palm straight up, palm front. Go low leaf palm, not your fingers this way. Bring your hands right back. Stretch that muscle down in here. Okay? Okay, now just take a big breath and we'll be done with this. Now, we've worked our ankles and worked this muscle that's so absolutely important. Now we're going to have another one. Bob? So Bob's coming here now. Watch how he's working with his feet. Put your feet together. So go. Go. Okay, so just come towards me. Bring your toes. Let's go. Wiggle the toes and not the heels. Just walk right up. We're going to go. Can't Scoot along. You guys are scoot like heck. You got a bad foot over there. Just scoot. Come on and get those toes going. How are you doing over there? Curl them under. See, this is similar to running in the sand or on a beach and digging your toes in the in the uh, beach. They're really important. How are you doing, John? <laughs> Good. Yeah, right. It's nice weather. It's thought out. Okay. Sorry. Now, back up. Now that we're done with that, <coughs> There's some blocking exercises that are done by the general thing. And I'll use uh, Lance. If he's coming, and you know Lance Weimer, and he's one of our national champions, and Lance uh, fought with me all over the place, and we almost had a big fight in Wales because they jammed the place and nobody could get in. But he's one of the very best fighters we ever had. The normal method would be just that much. The normal me blocking method is this way. That's pretty standard. And I think everybody pretty much does this kind of a technique. Watch. For us, you see, that doesn't convey the functionality. It doesn't convey the philosophy. It doesn't convey the salubrious nature of what I try to have. The most important thing is if I to be safe, to be, my hands are here and he punches, we'll block with our elbows as most people do. But most boxers will block with their elbows in this way. So using that in mind, he also, if he attacks me, I can just go like this, you see, and I really shunted the arm and said. So let's put this both together and say we're going like this. One, two. See, I'm moving one, two. So he's punching for me. I'm going two. Now you're seeing this. Are you sure you're seeing it? Watch once more. Punch really fast. Hard. Now you see, when I'm moving from here, the hand is coming this way. It comes over like this. So I'm actually bringing my hand this way and turning it over. So correct me in Agayuki, it's done this way. And I'm doing it with driving my body. Now, the classic thing that people do on a high defense is when he attacks, <clears throat> they'll step back here. Of course, you don't have to. I'm standing here, he punches. I'm only here. I didn't move just through my body. See, or I'm turning just like this. One, two, short step. Because if I take this real short step, then I can hit. But if I'm way back here, I like in the show, not to show the kind of system, then I've given him further opportunity to commit. So when I want this very short stance, I want from here, one, two, I want no going further in this so that I have my, I have all kinds of possibilities, so I'm close enough in. So when I'm doing this, I'm also 
Same time, only moving my feet this far. Watch, I'm just torsing my body. Look, tie the back here. If I keep my hand in this position, then my chamber would be here, correct? My chamber could never be here. Chamber's at the side. So if I'm tacking from here, one, two, this is incorrect. This is much more correct. So if I'm running from a one, two, like with the wado kata of chinto, one, two, my hand comes from here. See, when I move one, two, my hand is from here. It doesn't from here. Never from the back. So this is a habit that you get into because of your early training and it's necessary to develop the bodily structure. But later on, when he's punching, it can be this way. One, you see, two. And of course, the hand would fall hurt. It comes this way. So the very advanced way for punching is this way. Okay. Because this from here, one, two. And this hand, of course, is to relax. I'll, I'll, I'll just have to stay. One, two. One. You see, that way, and I'm coming back. You see how it works? I, 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 That's the way the stuff really develops. And what happens is we let our practice get in the way. So they have practice to avoid that, to impose another form of discipline. And it's called the relationships. So we do like this, like one, two, three. We step back. One, one, two, three. One, two, three. Now we can tell if I step back and I come come in further. I go one, two. We see that all the time. And the guy back here. And what do you tend to be doing from back there? See the things are tight. So what we'll do for you, this is the back of the arm, little point of the arm <clears throat> here, and then the toe. He's right there. And then toe comes here. I come forward. One, two, three. Now see the kick? I'm not kicking. I'm putting my toe in his armpit. One. Two, three, this way. This is the basic technique of, of karate. Now, this is how this looks. Pamela, now I'm blocking to here. Okay. Yeah, you're going forward. You're pushing. You're kicking. You're kicking. That's right. We can go there and back up. You're the other way. Now the roundhouse kick became involved because sometimes when the foot was back, they bring the kick this way, and the kick would come like this, and it would come at a little bit of an angle and be roundhouse. Okay, what I'd like to do is get your partner and try this, and you senior people know what you're doing. Help me by watching, okay? So you see hands know what I'm doing. Get out. Everybody get a partner. And Uh, uh, come here, Larry. Watch. If, if I'm working with him on this, and uh, and I'm moving from here, I want my toe right here. You see, I want it right in the armpit. One, two, three. And see how my body's relaxed? One, two. I, now remember, my weight is on my back foot right here, and I just raise my knee, put my toe in. I don't have to do all the contortions. There's three kinds of speed, right? Limb speed, body speed. Okay, now. Now that's really good. You can see the drill. Now sit down. Now, one of the ways that the Oriental, this is practiced very really intensely. Bob, did you come out here? So he's standing like this. And he squats down, squats down. Okay, now from this position, he puts one knee to the floor, puts the other knee to the floor, and he sits back. To get up, he takes one knee out, the other knee out, and rises. That's pretty simple. You see Carol. That's, that's the way you're supposed to get up and down from the floor. Yeah. And when you have a hakama on, that's the method for rising. So this idea of dropping this way is very important. So in this more further development of this kind of technique, when we're bumping oh, <laughs> Really? Yeah. 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 Y
Sure. Bob Tolman? No, you can do this with me here. Uh, the you want to do it, stand up with your hands on your hip. Make sure you got enough room beside you so you're not going to extend your legs. Okay, you can stand up and put your hands on your hip. This is rather tough. You keep it right there. Get yourself kind of kind of a little bit. Stand right behind you. Back and forth. Now, Bob is almost 50 years old, and I'll tell you who he is. He has a, he has a uh, degree in chemical engineering from Case. He's working on his odd maths. He's not very education. He pretty much runs a computer operation. Doing that. If there's a... Uh, Lori's been elected assistant, might have been secretary of labor. Right now she's an undersecretary or something. And his brother-in-law is the second in command in the National uh, the, yeah, General Service Administration mm -hmm. in So he's, he's about 50 years old. And he's about 45. 47. Put your hand down here and put your feet together pretty much. Like it. Now you go down. It's okay. Okay, yeah, now right. put out. Back, outside, back. I call my success out. and my sister's and quick success back. in being able to do this. Out, back, you can, up. You can take that. Now, if you have somebody with really bad knees, like bad knees okay, watch. You can take Mike in front of these here. Come here, Bob. Mike, sit on the chair. You can put a little stool up close to the floor. Put your hands on your head and get your legs aside. Go. Wake up. Go. Out that way. Well, it gets closer on the side of the chair. Now go. Get it out. One. Bring it back. Two. One. Two. You can do this from a chair. And they have these little stools about this big with a uh, Johnny Lambert or a <coughs> And a little tail, I guess, the guy sits that far out before on a cushion and does the exercise. So anybody can do this. It, it isn't something that really depends on the skill. Put your hands on your head. Down again. The other thing. Down. The other thing. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, good, stand up, down again, up front, back, front, back, take your feet, front, back, front, back, stand up, down again, back, behind you, up, Don't move. Don't move. up, back, up, back, up, back, up. back. Up. Okay, good. Isn't that wonderful? Hi. Now, so we're, we're starting to realize what this works. So we have the Quan Bu fork. And the Fan Bu fork, just like this, real basic sense. Everybody stand looking that way, real basically. Stand look that way. Point your left hand that way. It goes left, goes right, goes front, goes back, and goes middle. In front again. Now watch what he's doing. This time he's just going to push. He stands here, drop down, push. <coughs> now you move his back foot, he's not going to rise. Two, push foot forward, three, leaning back all the time. Push the other way, four, and push this way, five. See how nice that is? Right. Right. Now in this process, if you can see, drop down again, Bob. Push. Now turn very slowly, very slowly, turn very slowly, turn very slowly, very slowly. Aha, uh -huh. there's that low shikadachi. Right that you would want there, see? That low stance. And then he turns through it. We don't hold the low stance because it's not good for your hips to build the big butt, but we do move through it. Right? Okay, let's go down. Let's try that a couple times. Okay, make sure you got room to move. Okay. <laughs> now, one. Push it out. Now you got to keep your back absolutely straight. Take your back flip over, move two. Move your back foot over, keep push two. Got a lot to rise up. Let this knee come down to the floor. Now bring your foot in to the other and push forward. Move your back foot over and move five. Push your back foot over and move six. Okay, now there's variations of this with front kick. Now where's Johnny Lineberger? John? Okay, now watch right here. Look, John's been training with me on this. Now watch. He's from Tucson, Arizona. John's a three-time all-weapon champion, USK, and all champion of champions and fighting and everything else. He's beaten everybody and is a world champion actually from the USK. And you're, well, you're still a world champion for me. Okay, watch. Now watch how he does it. Move through it yourself.
Now, John has attended many, many really major seminars. We were up at what in, uh, what they call the gathering up in, uh, uh, where was it, uh, Sacramento. And the Kung Fu guys came in. We were all the guys who could do the Kung Fu. It was our guys. So would you please tell them that when you when uh, whether Leo Fong was there? Who was that other guy? Duck Fong Wong? Duck Fong? The, you the 92 year old guy? <laughs> no, no, you were out there practicing in Phoenix or something about that. You got him doing He said you guys were only doing Kung Fu. Oh, that was the 92 year old okay, Kung Fu guy there. Okay. Which one? Well, there was a good happy up there. There's another that that. Well, it was actually that guy in, um, in um, at the, the gathering there was like 93 years old. And he sat on the side and watched all the guys doing their kung fu and their tai chi and, and just like, mm -hmm. then whenever Nosa went up to do some of the moving drills and then he had me doing some of the push outs and later the old guy came over and said, you're the only ones doing kung fu. I don't know what these other people are doing. Yeah, and then you had another, who was that other guy that was in, in the Oh, Augustine Fong. Yeah, Augustine yeah. Fong. Yeah. Yeah. Speak louder. Well, yeah, there was a guy teaching a seminar for Augustine Fong, and he's in all the magazines all the time, that Augustine Fong, Wing Chun, Gung Fu. But um, the guy, I went to a seminar at his dojo, and uh, there was a Chinese guy there that was visiting the U.S., and he was doing the seminar for Augustine Fong, and none of Augustine Fong's people could do the, the Kung Fu. I was the only one there that could do the, the Kung Fu technique. The really low stances and yeah, you moving like, the correct way. Right. Now do it once more yeah. with punch, or you can do it with the punch. However you want to do it. Punch. 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 You see, and this is really deep. So these are the links to the past that uh, the senior people could do and should not forget, and you young people should try to follow, thus giving real meaning to the word do. Now, there's another example of what's done with do. And I'd like you to pack four dense lines right here, please. Arrange them up. One, two, three, four. Dense. Right. Well, they'll be done. Now, you know what a punch is. We'll just start punching from here. Like a real Okinawa punch. Don't turn them over. Punch really hard. Let's see if you can do it. Okay. When you shout and punch at the same time, let's see. Hey! 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 That's, all, that's, a, that's, that's a minimal punch. Shout to be. That's, let's have a big one. Shout. Okay. Now, you got to. Punch hard and shout, and then you're going to shuffle step. One, two, three, four. <laughs> we will not go ahead of John Leinberger. And who's in this role? See you, Pamela? So I put you, yeah, you don't go approach any closer, right? And you can't approach any closer, and you can't approach any closer, and leave the back row. Right? Now, what you have to do on this particular drill, then you have to punch, you have to shout, and I think you can do this. this okay, you want to punch, you got to shout. And you got to make it, uh, make sure that you don't run ahead of the person on your uh, on your uh, right or left. Now, any one of you guys that want to provide me with a big, nice big drum with the red ends on it and uh, nice drumstick as they have in in the shiny gyms, I'll be glad to accept it. They cost about a two or three hundred dollars. In the meantime, that's the drum. Okay. What's it? That's better, okay? Yeah. Ready? Hey! 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 Your lines here, get back here. Pay attention. Back up again. Back up again. And your lines straight. The lines gotta be absolutely straight. Ready? Hey! 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 Hey!
longer. Those punches are weak. Go. Remember, this is all consistent with our roots. This way, we develop terrific power, terrific speed, and we develop a mind that can adapt to things. That's the whole idea of this class. Tomorrow, you're going to learn all kinds of techniques and everything. And there's a lot of things I can teach you, but there's not really that important of that type of thing. See, there's, everybody has their, their miscellaneous way. Uh, I will teach you one thing very basically, and uh, I, I think this is kind of tricky teaching you here, but I will teach you. And uh, let's have uh, Bob Tillman. Oh, hey. Bob is uh, strangling me here in whatever way he wants to. He's going away from restraint. And of course, I can pull here and do all kinds of things. But one of the nicest things you can do here, if you grab a hold of me, I can just snip his nose. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not snipping his nose actually, I'm snipping here. And if you just snip somebody in the face, it's very deadly, real deadly technique. Very big problem. But you have to be able to get inside. It's almost like getting a wolf to bite you and you're reaching down and grabbing his tail and turning it inside out. It's almost that kind of thing. So it's very, very difficult to do. I can stand on that chair and I raise it 50 foot in the air and I can't stand on it anymore. It doesn't become my body changes or the chair changes, it's the mind that changes. So there's a little bit of part of your brain going, I make a little over here. And that part of the brain is what causes the free space. You know, when you're frightened or something, that causes you to duck and bob and flinch from things like that. And it also is the one that provides this idea that I, I feel this paralyzing <coughs> fear and I can't escape it. Or I feel this kind of, I don't feel any fear or any pain at all. I'm Irish. I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so I fight with everybody and I get great experience and I can whomp everybody. I, I'm not tough. I just like to fight and I have a lot of experience. But you get these other people and you start fooling around with this part of the brain. And you can control this and then all of a sudden this brain allows you to do things that normally would disturb you. So it's really, really, really important in these drills to work at. Now, uh, Dr. Carey here is the president of the World National Health Organization from Seattle. It's a worldwide organization, and I think mean, you guys know what it is. But the thing is that this is really important to do these type of things. And so we control that amygdala, and we can control the, the way the body moves and the way it can react, and then all of a sudden, we can really do things that other people can't do because you know how to control your body. So first and foremost, the body and the mind must come together. Now, we're very, very lucky to have the teachers. And if I can get my ass in the book here. Yeah. And I'm not going to write this on the board because I had a lot of this down. And Carol, uh, uh, for some reason or other, didn't get here and bring it to me. So we will have these charts out there. And again, this is our, our family, our family line here. We have, uh, actually, within this structure, I, I, I don't want to really bother writing it on the board, but actually, the beginning of our structure is Yasutuni Otoso, and Shuri in Okinawa, and um, he taught Konkan Toyama. Now, what Yasutuni Otoso did, or Anka Otoso, he was the founder, he took the chin form, he split it up into the hand forms, he was the founder of the hand forms. And his teacher was Busi Matsumura, who did the Basai Dai and Basai Show, and his teacher was uh, 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 Sakagata Toti, who did the 
the Kushin Ku formed the Kung Sun and his teacher was indeed Kung Sun Gun. And so we have that line back. That's our direct line. That's the line from the show to come too. And he was the teacher of uh, Kankan Toyama, who was the teacher of uh, uh, Yun Jung In, who was the teacher of Chili Park, and who was the teacher of Ni. And that's where we come down that line. On the other hand, we have Chosen Chibana, who was the teacher of, uh, he was, Shou, uh, uh, he was a Shonru, and he was also a teacher of uh, Genji Funakoshi, who taught the Giro Funakoshi, his son, who taught Ro Byung Jik, who taught Dong Chu Che, and the Kim Lo Jun, and they get taught me. I also trained under Dong Chu And then we have the uh, Kanro Higashi Onen, who found a Nahate, who was a great master of Goju. He again taught Kankan Toyama, and he was in the line of uh, uh, in Jiang Yun too. And he taught uh, what this Hong Kyung did, and they taught Kwan Bop in Korea. Now the interesting thing is that they were connected with the Goju Ru. This is a really strong Goju Ru line. And this is where we get the great master Masaki and Suzuki that I come from too. And he was a Robert Tuyasu teacher, and then on down to me. And there's a whole big long line of this stuff, and I think you can uh, uh, pay you to bother looking at it. And this is the, like, this sheet that I have a big one outside there. And you can see what they are, and you should see them in your history. Because we, indeed, are tied into the Kung Fu, very definitely. This school of Korean boy was in uh, Manchuria, and he went down to Shanghai, and then he went into a uh, study with Toyama. And Toyama made him really important, he went back to uh, Korea, and he started teaching Chandelan, and he was, in the meantime, teaching Kung Fu. So we have this, this Kwan Bop, is one of our major styles. And Kwan Bop is the old Chuan Fa, which is a Chinese hand, it was adjusted for the functional of the military. It escaped a lot of the philosophical aspects and so it became really absolutely functional. And you've all, most of you, met Charlie Park, my teacher. And so he's really, really a major guy. And everybody, he's here and I bring the senior people in my house and they go in my little room furniture back and they all practice. And so I have a teacher too, just like everybody else. But this is one of the really marvelous uh, things of our association because we go to the Goju, we're really connected. We're connected with the Sean, really connected with the Sean. We're connected to the Shodokan. We're connected to the Shodokan. We're connected with the Taekwondo. We're connected to all these things. And we see this central core as being important. We could say, is there something right with here? Well, I guess it's not. I guess I'm going to use it. We could take a... We could say that this would be like karate here. And this would be like, uh, and this would like be uh, Jiu-Jitsu you know, or Jiu-Jitsu. And then this would, we have a lot of real high rank here, so let's just play a game for a minute. Those people train more than 40 years stand up. And those people train more than 35 years stand up. Those guys who train more than 30 years stand up. The guys who train more than 25 years stand up. The guys who train more than, uh, more than 20 years stand up. I'll just show you how this thing went. Uh, when did you start? 1986. When did you start? 66? Yes, sir. When did you start? 71. 75. Okay. When did you start? 69. Yeah. Jeff? 69. When? 69. 69. 67. 70. 73. 73. 67. Yeah, he was my class of 67 on the wide stage. 72. 77. 57. 64. 71. 64. It's a long time of training these guys have done. And we have people coming in that have trained long. How long, Barry? How long do you train? About 42 years. When did you start? 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. Me, sir? Yeah, 66. Okay, 66. Okay, the rest is So these guys are being held, held in training, and we got to the really quite marvelous time. Okay, now I'm pretty much done because we have a lot of things to do. Tonight, there's no sense being going on because I could work in death, you know that. But I, <laughs> so I just will feel it. I always do, before I go off field, about five or six questions. It's always been with the master and stuff like that. And we come up and say, what's your question? If you got a good question, you gotta talk to you for five or six hours. If you got a bad question, you go away. So I'm just gonna span this thing very quickly. I'll uh, go to the higher range. Question? No. Question? No? What? Oh. What? You're supposed to have a question, yeah. 
No, sir. And just, I'd like to know what you think is probably the most important kind of practice, though. Oh, the most important kind of practice is long term compliance, by all means. It's a tremendously long product, and you can do it your entire life. And you start, that's probably the base for all the kind, and I'd recommend that over all of them. It's a complicated form, and it has different dimensions. They broke it down into a patchy, broken down into strict body, or broken down into a type of, of uh, mushi. And so it's a really uh, a marvelous form of two questions. So they're doing the quantum chung quan. And that's a, a 300 and some move. It's a humongously long form. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Body mechanics. The, the older exercises and forms, do you, do you think that uh, they truly understood the, the body mechanics or, or has, it, has it been lost today? No, they, I think the body mechanics have been lost, I think, in a lot of ways. I think that the, uh, if you notice, the push-up is nothing more than a side kick to the rear. Say, when you, when you do the push-up and you drop down like this, all you're doing is put it is kicking out the back. It's not very practicing that back here. It's just that. Yeah. See, if I'm turning like this, it's the same thing. If I'm doing I'm like, the same thing, if I move this way, it's the same thing as I'm, as I'm on the floor. It's the same same kind of body dynamic. So that same action creates that, creates a push out. The same thing. But I think that's lost. I think people just do a good exercise. It doesn't matter. You don't, you don't need to know what's in an egg. Just eat it and you'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Question? Yes, sir. You mentioned that uh, the Chinese uh, body came to America before it came to Japan. I mean, yes. I yeah, it came back uh, and, and really with the sailors. And when it came back here, see, it was nobody recognized it as karate because it wasn't karate. It was just fighting. So, I mean, it, 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 it didn't really assume the dimension, the name of karate, uh, except for the local until it went to Japan. Before that, it was Chuan, uh, uh, you know, Kansas Kiss Can or stuff like that. And there were a lot of Chinese that the, uh, <coughs> you know, came over to the um, build the railroads and things like that. Yes. And they brought it with them then. Oh, and that was a long time before it was in Japan. Okay? Um, circle and point technique, outside in, inside out. Do you start in the center and work around to the out? Or well, it doesn't outside? matter. Uh, it's still, it, it right, probably rises at the outside and comes in, it's probably the best way. But the pyramid, uh, the, uh, isn't the pyramid without either the base or the point. Right? But the one thing is that our techniques, the lot of technique is this way, you see, it comes in this manner, this way. And that's okay. But our techniques are this way, like uh, uh, Lance, right? either like me, my wife should carry around and picture me. Watch. One is really basic to our technique. See, this way, one. So we do it essentially this way. That's very Chinese. But in the sense that we load the back leg and we don't stand out like this, we have a different kind of a structure. Now, there's special drills for forming the stances, which I didn't want to get into tonight, what they call the, uh, uh, the proof of stance. And we've gone into those before, so many new people don't know this. But uh, maybe tomorrow I'll get a few minutes and we'll explain how the stances are formed. But this action here is definitely more Chinese than this. So if you see this kind of a technique, you know that where it's coming from. This considered round. And then this is the, nobody knows where that came from. This is what they used to do. Okay, any other questions? Yes. Sir, could you uh, share with us that you're feeling the relationship between you know, Korean karate and what people would think is a Japanese karate today. Well, I think that there is no uh, 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 The Japanese karate was a really limited, restricted karate. There's four styles, and each one is confined. See, I don't think, uh, like for example, the Wado or the Goju or Shotokan should be confined only to those actions. Right? So if you do the, like there's what they call a keyhole of the technique. So one technique starts from here, the other technique starts from here. The, the Shotokan, for example, always starts from here. But because I'm turning my body, it looks like this. That's the shoulder con. And the, and the, and the uh, maybe the uh, shoulders this way. And so there's a different, what they call keyhole. I don't see the purpose of that. I don't see that. Because the keyhole for one person is not the keyhole for the other. You know, it works differently because of the size of the body and all that kind of thing, because of building the jump and all that kind of thing. So I think that the Korean karate is exactly the same as Chinese karate at the beginning. About 1950, 1955, 1960, they were exactly the same. But they were pulled apart a little bit by the sport. So if you find a sport of Wuku karate, they're really different. Exactly. You can't do one form in the style of another. And in the Koreans right now, because of their uh, ethnicity, they refuse to, they say they're doing Taekwondo. 
which of course none of the great masters ever practiced Taekwondo because it wasn't there. So I think or you could say that Ta the old Korean karate and the Japanese karate were identical, but they were divided by interest somewhere around 1965. That was one? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. And so uh, all our guys are ranked pretty much in the other way. In the Kwamikan, you can rank in Kung Fu through the Ta Hong Kong Dragon and, and Wong Tai Chi. You can rank in Taekwondo through the uh, Chemukwan or the Central Taekwondo World Chemukwan. You can rank in Karate through the, through, uh, the Kwame Khan, through the, uh, uh, the uh, world organizations. You can rank in Jiu Jitsu through the world organization or, the, or the, uh, Yamanaka, uh, Koji uh, with us. Or you can rank in Aikido through the Aikido Federation if you want. So we have uh, <coughs> Koji through the world of Kabuto Khan. There's, uh, you can rank in recognized groups with a lot of different skills. So once you get your skill in karate, you should try to fill it in with the Taekwondo ranking. <coughs> you should try to fill it in with Kabuto ranking. You should try to fill it in with the Kung Fu ranking, and you should try to fill it in with what other ranking? Jiu Jitsu ranking. Right? There's all those things you do, so you have a, a you're fully certified. Right? Right? I think that's probably enough, and so uh, we got other things to do, so let's. Hey. 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 Hey.